Hello my friends, today I'm going to do a little bit different type of review. Today I'm going to review a holster setup created by Concealment Solutions out of Provo, Utah. But before I review the holster setup, I need to give you all some context. I had Concealment Solutions build me this holster setup because in the end of May, I'm going to go to Glacier National Park and I'm going to go visit the site of a horrific bear attack uh, that occurred in 1967. Now I've got a connection to this bear attack, which is why I'm going there. There was actually a 2011 PBS documentary called Glacier's Night of the Grizzlies, which chronicles the 1967 grizzly bear attacks that killed two women and severely injured a man. It's on YouTube if you type in Night of the Grizzlies, you can find it. In order to give you some context, I'm gonna share with you an interview that I did with my uncle who was involved in that, as well as a few clips from the documentary. This interview and these clips will demonstrate to you my connection to these two grizzly bear attacks. Let's watch, I'll see you on the other side and then connect the dots. Okay guys, I am here with my uncle Johnny, his wife Mary, incredible man. You're gonna be able to see uh, some of the stuff that he did in Glacier National Park. I'm gonna clip out some parts of Night of the Grizzlies and you'll see him doing uh, that interview. He's gotten a little bit older since then, but I did have some questions that the documentary didn't answer. I'm gonna take you all the way to the beginning of my experience with this, which is when I was somewhere between the ages of eight and 10 years old, I was with my grandma and grandpa in Pine, Arizona at our cabin and I was fascinated with bears and I wanted my grandma to tell me all kinds of stuff about bears and she told me she uh, had a pet bear when she was a little girl. It was a little black bear and they had that for years. But then uh, she also told me that, you know, one time my uncle Johnny, him, had to use his helicopter to go pick up some girls that were ripped apart by some bears. I thought, wow, that's <laughs> scary. My grandma didn't give me any context. She didn't tell me where it was or anything. So I just filled in the blanks in my mind. I thought that it had happened there in the mountains of Pine, Arizona. And I thought that the girls were camping together. Turns out that they were 10 miles apart camping. Not the same incident. I'm like, wow, that would have been also gross having to pick up an arm here, a head there. And I thought it was like pieces <laughs> of girls everywhere that he had to go pick up. He parked his helicopter, he had to go pick them up, put them in a trash bag, put them in his helicopter and fly away. I guess that's not what happened. Did you even have to touch any of the girls? He did see the girl when they first found her torn with her face off. I, I learned, learned them in the side rack of the helicopter. But they were in, body, yeah. in bags by then. Yeah, in body bags. In body bags? Okay, so the side... So when you were in the helicopter, you were separated from them. They, they weren't in the cab with you. Oh, no. When he carried the boy that was injured, also. Did well, he, he rode in the, the cab with He me. rode in the cab. He rode in the cab. So they loaded them in the so yeah, I don't think they talked much about, uh, they talked a little bit about the boy, but there was a man injured and, uh, or a boy, depending on, I think he was 19, or 19 so boy, man, whatever you want to call him. Do you think he would have died had you not been able to fly him out? He no, was a long pretty time badly ago. chopped. It tells in his yeah. hip and, and shoulder and everything, and he had to play dead to keep the bear from coming back again. Yeah, him. so the bear left him and went after the girl. Oh, okay. So we don't know if the, the boy, man, whatever, would have survived that, but my uncle made sure that he was able to survive by uh, taking him uh, in the helicopter when most pilots would not have uh, done that trip at night in a helicopter that did not have any uh, instrumenta instrumentation for flying at night. He was basically flying blind. In 1967, flying a helicopter in a pitch black night, skirting mountain peaks and valleys, some swollen with smoke, and then possibly blindly finding a place to land, was something of an extraordinary thing to ask a pilot. But John Westover was an extraordinary pilot. Since he was a teenager, Westover often said he lived aviation. A Vietnam veteran, he piloted helicopters in combat missions and advanced to the position of personal pilot for the commanding general. He also had something else going for him. To be honest with you, I kind of felt invincible, even in Vietnam. I, I never worried about things. Uh, 
whatever's going to happen is going to happen. It's going to do me any good to worry about it. So I, from then I put it out of my mind and it never bothered me. You agreed to fly at night when most pilots wouldn't. My question is, had you ever flown at night before in a helicopter that was not designed to fly at night? I think one thing that made a big difference there is that it was so dark because of the fire and the, the uh, smoke in the air and everything. Mm -hmm. It's so dark that they could barely see the anything. outline of the mountains to keep a reference. So in Vietnam, they taught you how to fly at night? In the military, that was part of the agenda. Just okay. Flying. But he hadn't really done a whole lot in, on the job because it wasn't necessary, but this was necessary. We went out and and made, uh, built four big fires so that he could land in the middle of them. The group also brought out flashlights to help guide the helicopter. Essentially that night, Gary and I were flying blind. I mean, we had nothing but a little glimmer to shoot toward. And we knew what al altitude we were flying, and we knew what altitude they were, that the chalet was, so we stayed above that. Ranger Bunny tried reading a topographical map in the red glow of the helicopter panel to guide Westover over and around mountains and ridges. It was absolutely black that night. The only way you could tell there were mountains is that there were no stars. I mean, there were millions of stars, but where the mountains were, the stars would disappear. This helicopter does not, did not have uh, instrumentation for uh, instrument flight and so uh, we were kind of on our own to keep it right side up. In the distance they spotted the glow of the chalet and the landing fires that Joan Devereaux had the guests build. And uh, we uh, landed to the flashlights in the, in the bonfire. It was definitely a valiant effort on his part to come in there because that place sits right smack dab up against the garden wall and I took a lot of courage and guts to come in and bring that helicopter in the middle of the night and land. Roy, still wrapped in Don Gullett's sleeping bag, was gently carried to the helicopter, and John Westover lifted them both back into the night sky. You dropped off the ranger and yes. you took the injured uh, yes. boy, 19-year-old uh, guy. Right. Did you fly him back to your post or did you fly uh, him to, to the, the hospital? I think it was a hospital in Kalispell. Kalispell. So you flew to the hospital in town, and then you flew back to your post, right? And almost as soon as he returned to his bunk, he was awoken. They came and woke me up again and said there's another episode up at, at Trout Lake. And so I picked up uh, a ranger and his high-powered rifle, and uh, we went to Trout Lake. And uh, the young people that were there were very anxious and uh, told us the last time they saw Michelle Coons was being, she was being dragged up the mountain with a, by a grizzly bear in, in her sleeping bag. So how old were you at that time? About 28. I'm actually planning to go there to that chalet. Okay. Um, wow. End of May. See if I can find out where that girl was torn up, uh, the first one. Yeah. I also want to see if I can meet some grizzly bears there. <laughs> I hope that nobody has to call a hel helicopter to fly me out, because I do, I, I've had a goal my whole life to, to see a grizzly bear in the wild, where they could, I mean literally, nothing stopping them from coming to get me. Your mom is a bit concerned about your adventures. <laughs> I, yes, I know she's concerned about my adventures, but I've always had them and I always will. So, as you can see, my uncle was the helicopter pilot that had to fly out these two young ladies that were torn apart by two separate grizzly bears. I've heard of this story since I was a young child. A few years ago, I actually learned more details about this. I learned that the attack was in Glacier National Park, not in Pine, Arizona. Since I've got a little bit of a connection there, I wanted to go see what happened. I have planned a trip the entire last week of May. I will be in Glacier and I will visit the location where these two ladies were torn apart. I will document this visit and share it with you. And I also intend on seeing some wild grizzly bears. I know a few places there in Glacier where you can see grizzly bears out there in the wild and I want to actually go see them. I will be doing some hiking and I will be exposed. Although the chance is minimal, there is a chance I may end up encountering a grizzly bear. In preparation for this, I've been researching grizzly bear attacks and um, yeah, what I've learned from this research is everything they tell you about how to stay safe around bears 
only holds up some of the time. It doesn't hold up all of the time. They say that grizzly bears can't climb trees. That's not true. Some grizzly bears can't, others can. They say if a grizzly bear attacks you, play dead and they'll just go away. In 1967, girls that try to play dead were murdered by grizzly bears. They say bring with you protection, bear spray guns. Well, there's been many people who've carried bear spray who've been eaten up by grizzly bears. Same with, there's been many hunters and people with firearms that have been eaten up by grizzly bears and some of them have gotten off shots, some of them haven't. You can't rely on guns for bear protection. You can't rely on bear spray to protect you because bears will ambush you. Bears are really good at ambushing their targets. You know, one second you could be walking along, next second you could have a bear right on top of you and you will not have seen it coming. It's pretty scary. Yes, bear spray helps. Yes, bear spray does save lives. Yes, bear spray works the majority of the time. Yes, firearms work the majority of the time. But there are many, 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 many instances in which these tools do not work because bears are good at ambushing. It's also common when a bear initiates an attack, the people freeze up. They are unable to execute their plan because psychologically they just freeze up. They don't do what they plan to do. They don't take out their bear spray or if they take out the bear spray, they can't get the cap off or something happens or the wind blows against the bear spray and it gets you and not the bear or you know, there's so many things that happens. You pull out a gun, it malfunctions. You get jumped on before you can even point the gun at the bear. Or the bear knocks it out of your hands. Or the bear knocks it out of your holster. And then the bear begins eating you up. Or you could be asleep and the bear attacks you while you're asleep when you're not able to protect yourself. There's all these things that make me feel very unsafe in my endeavor to find bears in Glacier National Park. Here's the thing, I don't want to have a negative encounter with a bear. I want to be able to see a bear from a distance. I have a camera that has a 600 millimeter lens, so I can get some good shots at bears from pretty far away with my 600 millimeter lens on my camera. So I don't need to be close and I don't want to be close. I don't want to put myself in danger. I enjoy my life, I want to keep it. I don't want to die. This is not a suicide mission. So knowing all of this, I've decided to have a set of holsters built. Okay, so here it is. 500 Smith & Wesson right here, 500 Smith & Wesson right here. Bear comes at me directly, no cubs. Just a bear charging me at the full on sprint. I pull out my pistols, I cock them. I point directly at the bear. If it bluff charges me, it'll be safe. If it gets within a couple feet of me, still at full speed, I guarantee you I'm pulling the triggers. Let's say a bear ambushes me from the side, grabs an arm, I no longer have access to my sidearm. I no longer have access to this gun, but I do have access to this gun. I can grab this gun. I can shoot the bear. Bear grabs this arm. I can grab the gun. I can shoot the bear. You'll say I missed 10 times and I run out of bullets. I've got 15 rounds in my Glock 40 and my 10 millimeter rounds will be bear rounds. Now, just to give you an idea of what the bear is up against, if I have to shoot him, that my friend is a nine millimeter bullet. I will not be using that. This is a 10 millimeter bullet. That is what I'll be using if I end up having to use my Glock 40. That's a last resort. The cartridges in my Smith & Wesson 500 look like that. Okay, that is a 700 grain hard cast bullet. This round will take down an elephant. It should have no problem taking down even the largest grizzly bear. So, nine millimeter, 10 millimeter, 500 Smith & Wesson, 700 grain. So, I will be prepared with guns, three of them. That reduces the likelihood that the bear will disarm me completely. He could disarm this, I'll still have my sidearm. He could disarm my sidearm, I'll have this. He could disarm this and one of my sidearms, I'll still have one. So I will have a lot of protection there. 
Plus, I will be carrying two bottles of bear spray. So in the event that there's a bear that is slowly approaching me, I can use the bear spray. And I will use the bear spray. I'm not gonna use bear spray against a charging bear in close proximity unless that bear has cubs. So I do have a plan. Things rarely go as planned, but if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. I'm coming with a plan. I can adapt, that's fine. Concealment Solutions out of Provo, Utah did this for me. They've never done anything like this before. It shows how innovative they are when it comes to completing a project. They did have their own strap system, but we decided that since I'm going into grizzly bear country, I better have something a lot more robust than a simple holster strap. So what I have here, this is a plate carrier that has nylon loops that allows this holster to attach. Now, as you can see, this is one whole piece of plastic right here. So this is one piece that holds two guns. It's pretty robust. It's not gonna go anywhere. I'm sure a bear could take it off me, but this vest is so strong that if a bear swiped it, it'd probably send me flying too. I don't think the bear's gonna separate this from me. So this also gives me some protection from my torso area. If you guys would like a holster like this, it doesn't have to be for Smith & Wesson 500. You could have a pair of semi-automatic pistols or a pair of 357 Magnum revolvers, whatever you want. You can contact Concealment Solutions in Provo, Utah. Just look them up on the internet. They're up there and they'll be able to pretty much make you anything you need. Despite all my preparation, and I've done everything that I can think of to prepare, I still realize that I am putting myself at risk going into grizzly bear territory, as does everybody who does. The chance is about one in a million that I'll get attacked. I really hope I don't, but if I do, I'm prepared. Okay, actually up in Glacier, I'm more likely to be attacked by either a human being or a swarm of bees than by a grizzly bear. I'm not gonna let that make me complacent though. I'm going fully prepared, but despite all of this preparation, I'm still a little bit concerned, especially because I've been studying up on all these grizzly bear attacks. I've been having these recurring dreams. I'm asleep in my tent and I feel my head in a grizzly bear's mouth and the grizzly bear drags me away and then everything goes dark and I wake up. Now, that means nothing except for these stories are getting into my head and into my dreams. I don't feel like it's a premonition of what's to come, but it's still freaky because those recurring dreams are about as real as life itself. And I never have recurring dreams like that. In fact, this is honestly my first recurring dream since my childhood. I have no idea how this is happening. It is just a dream, but it is kind of affecting me mentally a little bit. Everybody thinks I'm stupid for wanting to go see a grizzly bear. So I can't find anybody to go with me. So it'll be just me, my two Smith and Wessons and my Glock and my bear sprays, and the prayers of me and my family that I'll return home safely. I will be documenting this. I plan on recording as much of this adventure as I can and creating a video and sharing it with you guys when I get back sometime first week of June. If you like this video, please click that like button. And if you value the Second Amendment, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Next week, I've got a really special video for you. I will actually be releasing a video where I do a brief review on my 26 10 millimeter pistols. So all you 10 millimeter lovers out there or 10 millimeter curious people out there will have an idea of what's out there on the market. Like it seems nowadays, everybody just goes to Glock. Well, let me tell you something. Most of my 26 10 millimeter pistols are not Glock. Three of them are but 23 of them are not. There's a lot of great options out there. I really love what's out there on the market in terms of 10 millimeter. 10 millimeter is such a versatile cartridge. So the fact that we are getting more and more options out there nowadays, it's just incredible. And so I'm gonna share with you those options that I have. And I hope you come back next week for that. Just to make sure you do go ahead and subscribe to my channel and click on that notification icon so that you'll be notified when I upload my video next week. I'm also going to be doing in-depth reviews of these 26 10 millimeter pistols over the next year. So you guys will have that to look forward to. I love you all and I'll see you all next week. Goodbye.